anyway, I have no idea where we stopped at this thing last time. I hope someone else does. I normally I go and look at the videos from the time before, um, but this time I didn't. I have, no, I have no excuse. I just didn't. We stopped after the second mark you drew after um, Heliopolis. Here? Yeah. Oh, good. That's a good place. All right. Well, then we've got, uh, we, we, we have our task before us. Um, who wants it? I can. Mustafa? Yeah. You up, you up for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Then when in Jehuti, uh, Harjet, and Iri, Iri, um, Iri, Mac, Mac, uh, Iri, Sepi. That's now. It's now? Yeah, it's not Sepi, it's Seps now. Okay. Then uh, just said, then uh, it is, I don't know, but let me check the version of narrative art, narrative introductory words or something like that. What, which, in, which, which part are you hung up on right now? The when in? When in, yeah. I'm oh, just the, just the, then. I mean, it's just a it's just an introductory particle. It's it precedes the subject. I mean, just keep in mind, Egyptian really doesn't like to uh, start with a raw subject for whatever reason. It, pretty much in every phase of Egyptian, they really want to put something at the front of the sentence besides the subject to to just as a way of sort of preparing the listener. Like, here comes a sentence. So when in is common in narratives, it's, we can translate it then or next or whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of just a, it's, it's just a foundation for the sentence itself. Then, then uh, Jehuti mm -hmm. thought, uh, was saying, yep. uh, iri, iri mak, Mm, two, I don't know. Wait here. Sure. Uh, but do you brave do you two times? So you're thinking of the word maka from uh, the shipwreck sailor. That's actually a half hexagonon, meaning that's the only instance of that word. Um, and we don't know for sure what that word means, but this this is definitely not that word. This is the word uh, look. In Middle Egyptian, it would just be mech without these. Then we can say, uh, do, look, do, this, look. You're getting confused here and because you're, you're, you're trying to, um, you're trying to translate this as a piece of prose when in fact what we have here is recorded casual speech. So itty, mech, itty, itty is um, it, literally it is um, this is like a perspective said Jeff so I I'm going to do it I shall do it or I shall do literally translated look I shall do and then steps now means like repeat it I shall do I shall do so just very literally translated I shall do look I shall do I shall do but this is thoughts um, exclamation in response to the suggestion that he uh, write a letter to Neat, right? So the other gods, whoever was talking before, I don't even remember at this point, says, uh, well, we should get Thoth to write a letter to Neat to ask her what sh we should do. And Thoth responds, yeah, I'll do it. I'm the guy, I'll do it, sure thing. It's just, it's, it's casual speech, right? Okay. So this is, um, it looks really weird when you try to translate it literally, but this is like the late Egyptian equivalent of like, um, oh, heck yeah, I'll do it. Just a casual affirmative type statement like that. 
And in fact, this is really common in late Egyptian as a way of essentially saying yes. It's literally I I should do, but it's basically just yeah. Um, I don't know what what are other words for that like um, Roger Wilco. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to mean anything. It's just you're just agreeing to the thing that the other person said. Then the A1, A1 sign, the IRI, at the last of IRI, first IRI, uh, it is a suffix for a noun. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. And then here it's just missing. There's just nothing, but, but it's also like, you're not really meant to analyze it, right? It's, it's, it's really like saying like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. It's, it's just a okay. sort of, and it's, and the, the steps now is, is the typical Egyptian way of saying that like the person repeated the previous word, but like repeating a word is just a way of adding emphasis uh, in the same way in English where someone might say like, oh yeah, yeah. You say, yeah, twice. Why? Just, just to emphasize what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what that sentence. I yeah. think this is a really cool sentence in this text because although this is a very literary text, they have purposely injected a bit of uh, casual dialectal speech into the mouth of a god. So, you know, anytime you talk about Egyptian literature, especially with Egyptologists, you you might encounter this sort of stodginess about like, oh, these are the these are the words of the, great kings and gods and they they take themselves very seriously and then you read the actual text themselves and there there's there's humor there's um you know there's there's gods making fun of other gods there's uh there's like slapstick elements um there it's there these texts are actually very human and uh this is uh, a good indication of that we have thoth thoth kind of loses his cool here and just says like, oh boy, yeah. yeah, let's write a letter. So yeah, that's what you got. Okay, do you wanna, yeah. oh, uh, hieratic, hieratic before I forget. Uh, winning, mostly missing, but uh, if we compare, let's say we compare this example here, uh, it's, it's plain enough that we have the first part of it and we can assume the rest because also, you know, given our line endings, this is roughly the end of the line. So we have just enough space for something like that. Here, um, so that 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 reconstruction couldn't couldn't be better, couldn't be more certain. Um, and then Jehuti, yeah. we actually don't have the whole thing. It's kind of there's a lacuna at the uh, top right that loses a little bit of it. But that sign is so big and complicated that it, it's clear that that's what it is. Falcon on a stick, face, big tall stroke, Jed looking as it always does. The eye, two reed leaves. Seated man, very tiny, probably because it's not all that important. Uh, mech is mostly all here. Um, and then we just have a little bit of the eye for the next eerie. And we have a little bit of the zep here. Uh, and maybe a little bit, stupid label got in the way, but maybe a little bit of the reed leaf right there. So we don't have a lot of that, but uh, this is something, th this sentence shows up in a lot of late Egyptian texts. So uh, we can pretty much be very confident that, that that's what it says. I mean, this is the way, you know, it, um, in these kinds of texts, like a text like this was probably meant to be either performed like a play or at least um, told by a storyteller in a dramatic fashion. So like with, with voices and emotions and things. And we see this kind of sentence all the time. Um, so yeah, so it's not all there, but enough there to, to, to know exactly what we have. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to do you want to continue for the for the next sentence? I think it goes with it. Sure. Uh, sure. Why not? You can tell me. Winning. Then winning. Uh, winning of Hamas are. Iret Pa Uha. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, it is finished. Uh, then he he said, I miss, I think it's uh, to sit. To sit to ir pa pa the letter yes sit for then he sit for a letter he sat so then he sat there irat make the make. letter yeah to make then the letter then he sat down to make the letter yeah yeah and then hieratic again the same when in except we have a little bit of a weirdness on the end it's a little curved um if you look closely that's that's not that uncommon um and then the f kind of trails under we get the little f there hemes uh this is a good drawing of Hemes because most of the time in hieroglyphs, you'll get it either like this with the flat top or the sort of bowl shape with the watery top, which is how it appears in hieroglyphs. Um, I know Alan in his grammar draws it like this with a little notch on the bottom uh, that matches what you see in the hieroglyphs. This is the main reason that people argue that this is a depiction of a vulva or something, or like female genitals somehow. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I've always been a little mixed on that argument, but like it's used, it's used in the word for wife, obviously, right? Um, you know, very common word. And then a lot of words that have to do with women. And a lot of Egyptologists think that it's the hieroglyphic counterpart of like the penis hieroglyph. Uh, so, if that seemed utterly ridiculous to you when you had only seen this shape, um, perhaps seeing it in hieratic makes that a little bit more plausible, but I don't know. I'm not convinced. Anyway, uh, so there's Hemes and then the, the seated child, hand to mouth is the classifier for that word. Uh, it's, it's quite clear there. R, Iret, also so perfectly clear. Pa, not perfectly clear, but we've learned to recognize it. The, the wings are over here, and then the paw bird, and then the aleph bird is just teeny tiny. We've got another typically late Egyptian, very tall quail chick. Um, got a really good ha here. So the, the lily pad and stem, um, normally kind of a little bally at the top, and then a swoosh underneath. Got a really, really good example of that right there. Another highly stylized aleph bird. Um, and then our big uh, loopy cloth or paper classifier. And then the Y1 is just, I don't know, basically scribble, but you know it needs to be there uh, because it's a letter, right? This is one of the one of the rare cases where the classifier actually looks like the thing because uh, letters are written on papyrus. Okay. Any questions yeah. about this so far? Yeah. Yeah. Should should there be plural ticks on the letter? Yeah. Good question. Um. So. They have them in the Gardner, but I don't know if it's actually there. Oh wait, it's in Gardner's transcription. Yeah. Oh, maybe I miss it. Maybe I mistranscribed it. They're actually, really small. It it looks like a little dual tick. This actually, oh, this, oh, maybe. this hieratic actually looks more like the plural strokes than it does like the papyrus. Yeah, that's um, how he has it. He has plural strokes instead of papyrus. I don't know if that's okay. right or not. I'm gonna make a note. No, that, that does seem right actually. Would that also be true for further up then? There he is. Where have you been, Aurelio? You're late. <laughs> At lunch. Sorry, guys. No, no worries. 
Um, further, it, do we have this word before? Yeah, yes, it's here. Um, it looks pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a that's a fix I should make. Um, so this classifier, the little this little loopy thing, is um, you see it on. So I always associate it with FEC, which means to loosen. Um, so it's it's associated with things having to do with rope, things having to do with fabric, and things having to do with uh, paper. So it's kind of a it's kind of a generically like uh, flowy material classifier. Um, so it makes sense that it would be on the word letter because it's written on papyrus, right? Like that much is obvious. Um, I guess I thought you want the Y1 because it's also going to be on a scroll, but uh, it is usually, so this word does have the plural strokes in it a lot. I think we saw this in the late Egyptian class the other day um, where there was, there was like a point of confusion where I didn't mark it as a plural or I did mark it as a plural and wasn't supposed to be. I don't remember exactly what happened, but you guys probably all remember there was like a bit of confusion about that. And it's weird because this word is singular. And actually, I'll ask you, how do we know that this word is singular? Ucha is not a plural. How do we know? We know uh, from the pa. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This, this is our, what's the word? This is the decider in late Egyptian on, in, in all of Egyptian too. Um, I actually wrote a, a section about that in the in chapter eight. Um, in in Egyptian two, uh, every every noun phrase is really a two parter, and this the second part is kind of just semantics. It tells us what the thing is. Is it a letter or a tree or a goose or whatever? That's what that part of it tells us. Everything else, uh, gender, number. Um, Egyptian doesn't have case, obviously, but like its position in the syntactic structure of the sentence, all of that has been transferred. Oh, sorry, has been transferred onto the article, and the article is is carrying all of the semantic load for the noun phrase in late Egyptian onward. So, if there's disagreement between the the number indication of the article and the noun, it's the article that decides. Um, I hesitate to ever say always when talking about language because that's not how languages work. But this one is as close to an always situation as you're ever going to get. Um, the the article is the the syntactic uh, information bearer of noun phrases in late Egyptian onward. So this word cannot be plural, but it has plural strokes. So then, what do we make of that? Why does it have plural strokes? Like, I mean, they think of I, it as a collective somehow. Okay, good. Why? Because I don't know. There's lots of lines in a letter. There's it's an sure. indeterminate length. What does uh, what does the word uha mean more generally? It's it's okay if you don't know, but uh, if anyone does happen to know, is it is it a de decree? Close. Uha originally meant something like to seek for. And then gradually came to mean to wish or to want. Uh, so requests might be a good translation of this particular word. He's writing the requests. Um, so while we translate it as letter, um, and, and an ancient Egyptian writer at this time would have understood it to mean letter also, it derives from a uh, it's been abstracted from this idea of sending someone a list of requests um, or, you know, or things sought, something like that, right? So there is, there is plurality there. Just like Ralph said, a letter has multiple lines. It, it has multiple sentences. If it's a set of instructions from a, a superior to a subordinate, it's a, it's a sequence of commands, not just a single one. Um, so that's kind of where plurality comes in. And I, I don't actually know, um, but that would be my guess as to why it's there. Another reason why it 
can be there goes back to this thing that I was saying about the division of labor between the uh, noun and article. If it is the case that the article um, is the final um, arbiter of syntactic information, the presence or absence of a plural marker on the noun uh, cannot possibly accomplish anything, right? It's been, um, it, it's been crippled. I don't know. I don't know if I like that word. Sorry. Neutralized. Um, neutralized. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't mean to use an ableist term. It's just the word that popped into my head. Uh, so the, the plural marker on the noun can't ever do anything, which means you can put it in at will without worry that you're going to interfere with the understanding of the sentence, right? It no longer has much informational value at all. Um, so if you think of a, of a letter as being sort of a collection of requests and you have an idea that it's this sort of collective noun and it seems sort of plural to you, well, we might as well put the plural marker on there. Nobody's gonna get confused about whether the noun is singular or plural. It only conveys this sort of loose nuance. Um, yeah. I've got two questions about that. Uh, one is, um, uh, would it be parsed as a noun phrase with the uh, article being the head and the word being the modifier? Yes. Okay. 100%. Uh, the okay. The second question is, um, in Coptic, uh, can you, is it similar? Like you can, instead of having the weird um, plural, version of the word can you just put a nay in front of it yep and can Absolutely you put you can a pa in front of the plural version like uh, to to make it singular in theory yes um and there are some cases where that happens let me see if i can come up with one uh, i'm Maybe just going to give sheep i think in lambda they only have the plural version of sheep the show I, okay, maybe I'm wrong about that. Wait, wait, wait. What's wait? What's the word for sheep? Um, I'm just doing this from memory. So let's see. So, so, yeah. so. It, but it's a uh, in That's a lambda. The they only have the plural. So could you have uh, peso, peso? Yes. And then that would be singular sheep. Okay, so so that's um, a case where you can turn a plural into a singular with by changing the article. You definitely can. It's it's rarer because the um, so like the graphic marking of the plural with the plural strokes is extraordinarily weak in terms of like information content. The the phonetic marking of the plural is is a bit stronger. It does actually communicate something to the listener. Um, so it's more likely that you'll see a plural formed by putting a plural article on a singular noun than seeing a singular formed by putting a singular article on a plural noun, right? It tends to go one way and not the other. Uh, that said, it, um, I, I, I really don't see any issue with uh, taking a plural form and putting a singular article. I don't, I don't think it would break the grammaticality of the Coptic sentence. Um, I just think it's not as likely to happen because what mostly happened is they just dispensed with the plural forms. Uh, so it's it's not really around for you to for you to use that way. But yeah. Okay. Thanks. Kind of a fun thing. Um, this thing that you said about the article being the head word of the noun phrase is. Uh, I don't know another language that does this. I'm sure there are other languages that do it. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to pretend that e Egyptian is, you know, the perfectly unique snowflake in all the world's languages or anything. Um, but it is quite extraordinary how it happened and the fact that we can literally watch it happening, right? Like you look at Middle Egyptian where the noun is the headword of the noun phrase and go a hundred years later and the entire syntactic structure of noun phrases has changed with the article now becoming this like very strong syntactic unit 
when before it was just like, um, it was just an adjunct. It was just like a little bit of nuance being added to the noun phrase. So yeah, this, this reorganization of the syntactic structure happens right in front of us. So yeah, kind of fun. I mean, I don't know if I need to sell you guys on why it's, it's cool to study Egyptian, but for me, these are the, the big selling points. Like we can watch unprecedented linguistic changes happening, um, you know, over the course of centuries right in front of us. Anyway, okay, so UF Hair Jed, he said, um, yeah. presumably in the letter, he said in the letter. So that should right? be like more like he wrote or? Yeah, um, or, or, Egyptian. Or he's speaking aloud while he's writing maybe? Could be, um, it, it could also just be wrote. E Egyptian doesn't really have a problem with um, being sort of vague about whether something is written or spoken. Yeah, he wrote a letter saying basically, we could do it in English too. Yeah, I think it's perfectly okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay, who wants yeah. the next one? I can go. Okay, go for it, Aaron. Uh, Nasupit Re Tum. Um, King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Re At. Oh, oh, you were translating. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Mary Jehuti, uh, beloved of Thoth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tawi uh, Iunu, uh, the two lands, Heliopolis. I'm not sure how that joins together. Uh, beloved of guy? the two lands and Heliopolis. Oh, Lord right of the here? Two Lands. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Nantawi. Sorry. Nantawi. Lord of the Two Lands and Heliopolis. Um, not no. Lord of the Two Lands and Heliopolis. Actually, let's see if we have another Heliopolis in here. Yeah. Oh, they're not different. Crap. That would have been helpful. Uh, it would have been really nice if they were different. I think this is the Nisba form. Uh, it's an adjective describing Rayatum. Oh, like the, yeah. the, the Heliopolan. The Heliopolan. The, the, the Heliopolitan. The Heliopolitan. There we go. Heliopolitan, yes. Okay. Um, and we'll just do, well, let's look at hieratic real quick. Sorry for interrupting you, Aaron. I, I just, uh, I got confused about where we were in the sentence, but that was, you did oh, a good no job. Worries. Okay, so these guys, I mean, Sue, is it's often like that, but here we just have like a little like blob thing at the top where we would expect the horizontal and then a really long crossbar. Um, beat is nice. Beat is almost always like a huge hieratic sign. Like they really want to include all parts of the B. Um, Ray, I've got it hatched here because I think probably Gardner's transcription has it hatched but I actually think it's perfectly visible. This is definitely the beginning of a cartouche. Um, and then there's enough of the ray in there that I see it anyway. Um, oh, and this is another interesting thing about hieratic texts. They often only draw the beginning of the cartouche. Um, so they, they don't draw the entire thing around all the hieratic and they don't even do the a, a sort of parentheses type thing. They just do the, the opening side of the cartouche and, and leave the rest empty. And you're just meant to know that like, uh, presumably the, the cartouche ends here. Um, it's not actually specified. And then this tem that we've seen plenty of times, just big giant tem, little M thing. I don't see much of an ooh, but I guess it's this. It's just a little squiggle right there for this ooh. And then falcon on a stick, mare. R, Mary, uh, classifier for Mary because it's a concept um, that can't be depicted visually. Jehuti again, this this big like uh, combined sign for all parts of the Jehuti, um, which is actually its own hieroglyph too. I discovered that while typing up this transcription, uh, you don't you don't have to type like. Uh, the the bird and then the T and then the two strokes separately and combine them. There's actually a specific sign code for that entire uh, complex of different hieroglyphs. 
Falcon on a Stick, Neb. We got a really cool Neb here where they've done, you know, what we usually see the bowl, the top line, and then the like the fibers of the basket in the middle. But they kind of just like the fibers wandered off from the basket itself. Um, but that's that's what those are. Uh, the Tawi is is good enough. I mean, we know what that is. Uh, the Unu sign is actually really good. That one's very clear. And then, yeah, and then all the rest up to there, exactly as expected. One slight interesting thing about the new pot is that it's clearly been uh, produced in two separate strokes. It's also very common to see the new pot with uh, just um, part of it. You know, you mentally fill in the rest. Okay. You want to keep going, Aaron? Sure. Yeah. Uh, pa iten nu um, sechej um, the sun disk mm -hmm. um, that brightens uh, tawi uh, m inu f uh, that brightens the two lands um, in. Its appearance or his appearance? Yeah, Inu is a little weird. Um, Inu is like this, it's like the surface of the thing. Um, it's very, very similar to the word for color, um, but it's not quite color. It's like um, something superficial. often translate this as shininess or shininess. Yeah, I, I actually think that's a bit too specific, though. Like um, uh, dullness, shininess, uh, uh, colorfulness, all of these are, um, are, are sub descriptions under the heading of, of Inu. Mm. Quality of appearance, something like that, but mm. superficial, the, the surface appearance of the thing. Um, but oh, oh, and then in in this case, because of the context, yeah, it's it, 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 his appearance is shininess. But in a different context, it could be dullness, or it could be uh, uh, brightly colored, or or um, roughly textured, or any number of things. So it's the the quality of his aspect, whatever that happens to be. Yeah. So in this case, since it's the sun disk, in the quality of being a, a sun disk, which is. I mean, it uses the word brighten, so. Yeah, about that. I'm so glad you mentioned this. What's happening here? What's the grammar? Uh, this, is, this is a mean question. Wait, <laughs> Sorry. give me a second. <laughs> Mm, it's not an adjectival sentence, is it? It's not. It's it's so kind of not Egyptian anything. in any way. Yeah, that's it, Aurelio. You, you're on the right track. It, what did it's, you say, Aurelio? Is it Middle Egyptian in any way? Oh, it's Middle Egyptian. What? It's it's an archaic phrase, uh, although it does have the paw. It's it's kind of neither. It's kind of like when um, when modern English speakers say things like, um, thou doth wisheth or something like that. Oh, where it's, my, my ears are bleeding. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's like when someone tries to imitate archaic language, but they don't really speak that language. So they end up creating kind of gibberish. Um, it's that, so I would call this a, um, like a participle, like a middle Egyptian participle. Hmm. And uh, the, the entire phrase is in apposition to the name Rea Ah, more... uh -huh. I see, I see, I see. Okay. So huh. it's more like. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think it is? Uh, yeah, it's more like. Uh, uh, it's more like beginning of the late Egyptian. In something like Amarna period. Yeah. 
So we've got um, the sun disk who illuminates the two lands with his appearance. Um, this is not the way you would say that in Middle Egyptian. Um, in Middle Egyptian, I would really want a relative clause with a um, with a you know an adverbial sentence, but like a verbal, like a first present. Uh, the sun disk. Um, let's see, ha eaten neti sahej. Uh, that's that's what I really want. Um, but we don't have that here. So uh, what we have is this thing that Middle Egyptian does where you can take a verb and in theory, by modifying the verb in some way, you can make it like a participle, like the sun disk illuminating the two lands, right? And that's what this sentence structure would give us. But this can't be just Middle Egyptian because we wouldn't have that, right? So it's kind of neither. It's neither late Egyptian nor Middle Egyptian. It's, it's a weird hodgepodge of both. Found a great term for that the other day in an article on uh, on genitive constructions, and it was called the uh, Egyptian de tradition. Um, yeah, and I, I like that term. I mean, you could also call it neo Middle Egyptian. That would be another way, but uh, Egyptian <laughs> de tradition just sounds great, basically because it, it sort of has those those aspects to it, right? It's kind of artificial. It is something new created from the classical language, like neo Latin sort of. I don't know. I like that term. It, it, that is the most common term. Uh, the, 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 another equivalent term might be, uh, it's a, a worse term, but literary late Egyptian is sometimes used inter interchangeably with Egyptian de tradition. And it just means that like, it's, it's late Egyptian, but it's purposely archaizing, which makes it literary. I don't know. It's, it's not as good. But yeah, you might see either of those terms. That's exactly what this is. This is this is ostensibly Middle Egyptian, but it's Middle Egyptian being written by people who haven't ever heard spoken Middle Egyptian and and couldn't have for 500 years. So yeah, it's it's modern people trying to write Shakespearean English. It just it's just weird. And this is because he's writing a letter. I assume that he's adopting this sort of formal archaism in a way. Yeah, yeah. He's writing a letter to a goddess on, um, in you know, in the name of a of the most powerful god. This this is the most formal circumstance imaginable. So we're going to use our fanciest language, and maybe we're not that good at it anymore. But we're going to try our best. Yeah. So do you think this um, is evidence of when uh, I transliterated this? Go ahead. We'll come back to you, Rob. Oh, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, um, I know that I said uh eat e new, which is wrong. I mean it's just e ten, right? But I always I, I always want to transliterate the, the sounds that I see, especially when I'm seeing a new plus an oo. So should I not do that? I mean that's how I, I would have that? done it as well. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, and I think the word is atun. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, so this uh, ooh, this ooh good. probably goes here. Got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, so it's not even spurious. Uh, but yeah, if I were to transliterate this, I would absolutely transliterate it like that. Okay. Because that, that's what we have written there. Um, and it's, you know, it, it ties into this whole thing, right? Because that's not how the word is spelled in Middle Egyptian. Mm. So it's just one more piece of this where it, it, it adds to the sort of the... Um, the eclectic nature of the sentence that we, we've had so much fun analyzing. Ralph, what did you have to say? Oh, I was wondering if you think this is like some sign of religious reconciliation after uh, the Amarna period, because it's explicitly identifying Ray Atum with the Aten. And I know Aten so, shows up before and after, but. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say too. I, my answer to that is I don't know. Um, it, it very well could be. So we can easily imagine a, a sort of subtle effort on the part of scribes to mention the Aten as much as possible in conjunction with um, Amun Ray or, or whoever, Ray Atum, whoever we're talking about, as a way of sort of saying, like, this isn't a separate thing, that we're just, we're co opting it. Um, but you do see references to the Aten 
like this uh, before the Amarna period. Okay. So if they only showed up after, I would say that's very clearly what's going on. But because they show up before and they don't really look any different, right. it's hard to say that anything deliberate is happening. Okay, that makes sense. Hi, Radic. Let's see. We've got Pa. His wings are floating away again. We've got a missing reed leaf, but that's no trouble because we know exactly what we should see here. And we've got all the other parts of it. Um, so yeah, really, really no doubt that the part that's missing here is just a reed leaf. Uh, hedge, ugly little S, but there it is. Um, and then again, Tawi we've seen before. Kind of interesting that there's an OO and, and plural strokes on that. I don't really know what to do with that. Um, maybe uh, who brightens their two lands? <laughs> now, I mean, that's dumb, right? Because U is not a third person plural suffix pronoun in Middle Egyptian. Uh, but late Egyptian, the, uh, Tawi is not an inalienable. So you can't express possession on a noun like Tawi using a suffix pronoun. Um, so I don't know, is this another example of just how much of a hodgepodge of two different phases of the language this is? Maybe, I don't know. Kind of fun to question, think about. Question? Yeah. Um, could it just be basically like there and there in English? If it if it's pronounced similarly that he just basically writes the third person, but in, in reality, that's because it is, um, uh, it's a homophone with the, the dual? Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, it is. Um, I forget, I, I think we do have this. Oof. Oh man, it's like right there, just out of reach in my brain somewhere. But the, the phrase Neb Tawi does survive later in a way that we can read it phonetically, either Coptic or Greek, it's, it's somewhere. It's like in somebody's name or something. Um, there's, there's somebody called like Neb Tawis or something. I, I can't remember it specifically, but I know that Tawi actually does survive somewhere. And it is something like Tau. Um, so yeah, so hmm. this just this could be just a phonetic sort of ooey thing on the end of it. Um, that would fit, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like my version where they were just like so like just like spastic about trying to construct a Middle Egyptian sentence despite not speaking the language, where they're like, we have to put suffix pronouns on everything. Um, and it's it's the third person, so it needs to be ooh, and we'll just stick it on the end and they make something. <laughs> It's it's exactly the same as when people say like thou doth. Mm. They're like, like I know I got to use thou, even though I never say that word ever. And I know that the verb endings have to be something weird that I also never say. But nobody goes so far as to say like, well, the second person verbal ending is sta, and the third person is the. Like you know, you just kind of like flail around and like grab weird sounding stuff and throw it together so it looks old. Um, right. The, the only thing I would be worried about is, I think in this story, I don't know, I mean, we're just getting into this letter, but I don't think the letter is supposed to be humorous. So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is I don't think- the Oh no, I don't think this tale, is, I don't think they're making it uh, in a, I, I think that, I don't think the writer of this is in on the joke. Got it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not laughing with him. I'm laughing at him. Uh, <laughs> which is pretty presumptuous of me from my from my perch three thousand years later. But you know. All right. That's in the question. I mean, did they did they know better or do we know better? That's a uh, it's a really interesting question. And looking at letters when they were written during those days. So how competent is there the Egyptian that I'll be saying, or is it just a standard? Is that the way? I mean. Is thou doth, uh, yo, my tongue's curling, but yeah, is that, uh, is that just the, is that just the right way how to say it? We do it Think in English, about it like right? this, I mean, yeah. What, what I mean is like the whole, the whole plural coalesce is in English. It used to be something like we say in, you sayeth, or something we, uh, they say in, but then later those get standardized. Who's to tell that early Middle English speaker or late Anglo-Saxon speaker that they're wrong? A thousand years Fair. Ago. Um, 
I think something that happens is uh, there's this uh, a propagation of error that happens, right? So you, you've probably seen this, you know, uh, in like Christmas markets or whatever. Uh, Renaissance the, festivals. On where? Renaissance festivals. Renaissance festivals, yeah. Ye olde shop. Ye, ye olde Egyptian school, yeah, of course, naturally. <laughs> right, and like pe people don't know a thorn when they see one. <laughs> right, nobody knows that that first letter is supposed to be a thorn. Um, nobody knows, like, why in the world would it be called ye old? Uh, ye is the is the second person plural. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But like, people who are painting that on the sign at the Renaissance festival, they're not thinking about any of that. They're just they're just parroting something else they've seen that is just olden. And it's kind of correct because that's how they say it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it goes back, goes back to my point. So when you have neo, neo, whatever, neo Anglo Saxon, <laughs> it's not even well, wrong. How are we to say it's wrong. <laughs> I, I remember at the beginning of this, we were going to, we were wondering whether um, gods were going to speak and older more formal egyptian and here it's interesting because thoth speaks very colloquial with the yeah yeah i'll do it and then very formal with the old-fashioned formal stuff. and clumsily at the same time <laughs> and you know i i honestly i i i don't think that the that the middle egyptian grammar errors are intentional but at the same time it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they were because this is clearly a humorous story yeah this is i feel like this, this is like the letter he story. writes is so over the top like it's, yeah. it's an entire page of titles and salutations and fancy <laughs> language and there's like one line at the bottom that's the actual content that's and a I joke like that has to sure. be a joke <laughs> um it's it absolutely is these same kind of jokes um are in middle egyptian literature too and I, I, we really we're past time we really have to go but like let's come back to this next time because i can we can we can find some really cool stuff um i think egyptologists take these things way too seriously if you've ever gone to a movie in egypt you know that like the the appearance of taking things seriously is often a deliberate comedic choice in order to set up a punchline um, and Egyptian literature is full of this. So yeah, we'll, we'll find more. We have to go for now. I'm really sorry. We're, we're out of time, uh, but I'll see y'all all in a little bit and we'll do some, some more uh, late Egyptian. All right. Take that one. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs>